Like everything in life, you wait years for nothing, and then four come at once. On Wednesday, the 30th of December 2015, the IUPAC, or the International Union of, of Pure and Applied Chemistry, officially announced the discovery of four new elements to the periodic table. Elements 113, 115, 117, and also 118. This finally fills up the seventh and bottommost row of the periodic table, which was started all the way back in 1789 with uranium, and nicely and neatly fills out the table until number 119 or 120 comes along and messes it all up again. The four brand new elements weren't simply discovered, it's a bit more complicated than that. The world of chemistry was pretty much certain on paper there was an element 113 or 117. But you don't just need, oh I think, therefore I've discovered it. You could stretch that prediction method of discovery a long way. For example, if all you needed was, oh I think there's something, the official periodic table would look something like this. So the IUPAC states that official recognition of the element will only happen when sufficient proof of the object is documented, aka synthesizing it. That line was crossed for four elements in the last days of 2015. Element 113 was discovered by a team working in Kobe, Japan, making this the first element discovered in Asia, which is not counting Russia, but then we never do. This, the whole Japan thing, leads to some interesting naming possibilities, but we'll get to that later. Elements 115, 117, and 118 were found and credited jointly between the U.S. Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California and the Russian Institute for Nuclear Research in Dubna, which are so good at finding elements that they've discovered roughly this many, and there's even an element named after the Dubna lab. These four elements are by far, far beyond any naturally occurring elements in nature, and can only be made by smashing lighter elements, or their nuclei, into each other, to briefly combine them into a huge larger element. The bigger they are though, the more unstable and more quick to decay they are, making it harder and harder and harder to record any occurrences of these new elements. So it's not every day, year, or even decade, for elements are officially confirmed. Also, a tradition slash rule stretching back centuries states whoever discovers them gets to name them, which is fun. We will hear official suggestions within about five months, but it can take years to decide on an official name for an element, so don't hold your breath. However, looking at recent naming trends given to the most recently named elements, it sure won't stop us theorizing. Element 113 was a first for Asia, and particularly Japan, so the name may reference Japan, like others reference their respective countries of discovery, like Polonium, or Francium, or Gallium, or Americium, which is another way of saying American. Some ideas are Japonium, after Japan, Rikenium, after the research group that discovered it, Riken, or Nipponium, or Nihonium, which is respectively after Nippon or Nihon, which is Japanese for Japan, and no, I didn't even try to pronounce those correctly, because I wasn't going to get it right anyway. Some ideas for the other elements are famous scientists, as that has become a common thing. You can see at the bottom of that list you've got Einsteinium. But since the namers tend towards their respective countries, then US named elements would tend to be Western scientists, and also with Russian, it would tend to be Russian scientists, so you can kind of give clues onto what the naming might be for that one, if they choose to name it after a famous scientist at all, which seems likely, or not, depending on how you look at it. But, it's basically just theorising at this point, I'm making stuff up, except not really, it's based on evidence. But what do you know? Until next time, I've been Zephyrus, and thank you for watching.